people want to feel like they made a contribution to society, that they have value and they're still worth something. So a lot of people will wear their vet regalia, so people will tell them, wow, you know, wow, 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 and they get it a lot, because it's biologically and classically conditioned to train in us over a thousand years. Ago. Leonidas, old man, he used to go kill people, he used to go throw grenades in people's houses to get beat con, right? How many babies were dead in that? I don't know. They were killing my buddies, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. I told you that. Um, John uh, Geddes and Nixon and Rockefeller all put you kids in a sausage grinder and destroyed your youth. And then the people related to them that were born after them, they play lots of vinyl. Go back to the glory days of the 70s that the people that were murdered by uh, wealthy people in the 70s in Vietnam <laughs> Couldn't, there's a large purge in the 1970s. It's called Vietnam. It purged a lot of our middle to lower class white people, but mostly our Mexican and black people that wanted to establish themselves as that guy. Hey, ooh, Leonidas, ooh, hero, hero, hero. He's got the look. He's got the he's got the hat on. He's got the bumper sticker. He's got the plates. That's a hero right there. You don't know that. Old Blunt Force told me what he did, and I was like, yeah, I saw that on TV. So you threw grenades into people's house, blowing up little children to get the guys that were hiding from you so they could kill you and you could kill them. And the children that die in the aftermath, I was catch this war. They get in the way. They shouldn't be here. Why are you in Vietnam blowing up people in Vietnam trying to establish their own government because you don't like their government? You're on the other side of the world, and you don't like these people's government philosophies. And so you're going to go there and help your government murder them in their houses while they're trying to murder you. You flew across the world to go murder people for your government because they told you that their government was bad and yours was good. Now you want me to give you absolution, tell you what a courageous man what did Earl do? <laughs> My mom said, what did Bill Kirk do? When you got that accident, he just mellows out. He just, yeah, what did Earl do? They told me I was the most efficient killer in my outfit. Outrun everybody by 45 seconds. That's more than that Ledicky girl who does swimming people. She outdoes them by 28 seconds. If she outswims people by 28 seconds. Most of our fighting is done on ground and then pick up an airplane and fly over the water. So I have to swim 30 seconds faster than everybody, but I run 45 seconds. It's 15 seconds short of a minute that I'm ahead of somebody. Okay. It's hard to kill somebody when he's 45 seconds ahead of you. Ever seen a run of the arrow with Rod Steiger? Okay. <laughs> Do you understand? If somebody's 45 seconds ahead of you, climbing over things like a monkey, running as fast as a cheetah. Okay. And then he can hit people under duress with very small amount of time from 400 yards through a four inch space and get you and incapacitate you with an M16 which isn't as efficient of an assault rifle that they give a sniper imagine what he could do with a sniper rifle it's 45 seconds faster than you climbing over stuff and running okay and what takes you two minutes took him one minute getting hit in the head by some over-anxious Missouri hunter, okay, <laughs> knocking his helmet off, still picked it up. They said, look at that line of fire, I'll shoot through that and shoot and kill. And he did. And it was said 100 yards, 400 yards, at an angle, between four inches. Okay? All you guys with your little hats, I'd kill that motherfucker. He thinks he's so awesome. How dare he disrespect everything I did in the war. My patriotic training class at Shepherd Air Force Base in Wichita Falls. I was watching some of. That's why I threw those motherfuckers out. <laughs> I was watching some of lean on me. Took me back with me and Tony. Uh, I want to say Tony. God dang, I can't remember her name. She was from Motown. And he almost had sex. No, he wasn't gonna have sex with her. Did you want to have sex with her? Oh yeah, I wanted to have sex with her. She sat there in that bathtub for an hour, and I watched the show and didn't get up out of that chair. That I don't like. It was a Don Johnson show or something. I don't know what it was, like Miami Vice or something. 
I didn't move. She left the bathroom door open and she took a bath. And I was like, she's taking a bath with the door open. Shit, I'm engaged to Yolanda. I can't go in there and start having sex with her. You want to? Oh, yeah, she's got a nicer body than what Yolanda does. <laughs> she's got a better personality in lots of ways, yeah. She's really cool. So Oakland girls are, know what's up. And they're, they just want something better than what they were born with. She came out in a robe and she started crying on the bed and said, I'm never going to have what you have. I said, how do you know I have what I have? How do you know law ain't screwing around on me? She just keeps telling me, go to the club. Go to the club. Have fun. Shake a hip. Every time I go to the club, I get hit on more than I can shake a stick at. I get women with better bodies than my fiance all up in my shit. I get black guys all saying, what's that white boy got there? What you, he ain't got nothing between his legs. <laughs> if I ain't got nothing between my legs. And um, I ain't that. Then how come all the women around here want to go try me out for size? And then when they do, it's like, that. you need to get with that white boy. He's got like the energy of the lover, of the bunny of love in him. That was when I was young. Ah, they didn't have the Wi-Fi transmission reception stuff to, to depress you while you sleep back then. They didn't uh, have a long engagement to... Yolanda, who was very controlling and abusive, a five-year marriage to Stephanie in the state of Arizona, which was controlling and abusive, an 11-year marriage to Amy, who was trained horrifically by Michael Aquino, the two of a little bit of the cutting-edge mind-control torture mechanism. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Horrible shit that they did. You know, it's like, y'all motherfuckers ain't got nothing to better do. You religious principles, you, your family line has created most wars, even Judy Krishnamurti said so. He didn't say it was Jesus' fault. He said it was the Vatican. He blamed the Vatican. He didn't blame Jesus of Nazareth. He said the Vatican acts nothing like Jesus of Nazareth uh, applied physics in the Bible. Judah read the Bible. He understood the Bible. He understood what Jesus was saying. He just sat there and said organizations, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, did nothing to give any credence or credit to Jesus' applied physics words and or actions. That's what he said. He didn't. He was Peter Punk in it. He, he went around. He, he Peter. That's a Judo, in a nutshell. Is Peter Pumpkinhead? You know, fed the starving and clothed the poor, showed the Vatican what goes forth. But he made too many enemies of the people that would keep us on our knees. So he died grinning on live TV. Was he nailed to a chunk of wood? Well, everybody said he was better at beating Jesus than Jesus was Jesus. <laughs> he's so much smarter. So much more educated. No, he's talking to a bunch of educated people that he was trying to simplify their thought process. And they were always trying to complicate the thought process by saying, yeah, trying to figure out what he was saying. And then tell him what he was saying. Instead of sit there and ask him, because he asked him a question. And then he, they were giving him answers. Instead of asking him questions. And it used to frustrate the shit out of them. Because they would always, oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. I do get it. Every time he starts talking, I get it. But he was like giving them the ability to question. So they wouldn't run around always trying to be the solution to the problem and be the answer man with all the answers. Instead of going around and asking questions and finding out your own answers with great love and compassion and gratitude. That's what Judah was doing. He wasn't trying to get people to go, I know what you're talking about. I'm smarter than everybody else here. I get it. The rest of them don't get it. Okay. The Lotus Blossom Buddha. The line of the, of, uh, the Dalai Lama. He comes out and he just sits there and he just smiles. He, you know, he just looks at him. Yeah, he's holding the Lotus Blossom and he just looks at him. And the one of the guys looks at him and smiles. And he hands him the Lotus Blossom and he says, go spread the work. Go, go spread the... Enlighten yourself. Go do this. You know, and so there was a, a monk from Tibet who's in a sequence of the Dalai Lama. Go spread this out. War, not successful. Love, when unselfish and not abusive and attached, very successful. Okay. Teach your children, love them. Don't be attached to them. Tell them what to do, how to do things. Show them through your love of faith how to be a good person, how to be grateful for what's given to you in life by greater than yourself. True, simple stuff. 
I'll be back, man. I didn't expect to go this way. That Lopez woman, man. Every time I connect to her, I get all this wimpy ass fashion shit. I watched him to Zoolander too. Yeah, it's just mean. You're, really? Seriously? You don't know why I killed Justin Bieber? I mean, that's just mean. It's, it's not good to put out into the universe, Buddhist people. Okay, love you.